David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. This is the Watch Your Lip Fast Fish Beach Fishing Series where we're going to teach you how to become a successful beach fisherman. Guys, today we're going to explain to you how to show up to the beach when you're going fishing with a plan. So important to kind of have an idea of what you're going to do. Start mapping the day out before you get there and you're going to be a lot more successful. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into the video. Over the last 25 years, we've experienced a lot of different things that have really hindered us from catching fish or helped us catch fish. And so the purpose of these videos, uh, and specifically this one, is to kind of help you maneuver and navigate through a lot of those challenging things. Let's get right to the fish and start being successful uh, a lot more quickly than I did. I had to learn things over time. So guys, beach fishing can be one of the most rewarding and inexpensive ways to catch very big and impressive fish. So, I mean, target species from the beaches in Southeast Florida are snook, tarpon, jack crevels. We get monster jacks, uh, black tip sharks. Um, we don't do a whole lot of targeting um, sharks in our fishing episodes, but guys, we catch black tips. Uh, we hook bull sharks sometimes, and um, you can catch all types of different sharks, and we're, that'll be addressed more in other videos. But guys, we can you can catch mangrove snapper, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, uh, pompano, palometa. Oh uh, gosh, what else? Barracuda, cobia, kingfish, even a sailfish was hooked one time. I saw a sailfish get hooked on the beach. I've never landed one, but I know it's possible and I think we're going to land a sailfish at some point from the beach. But guys, it can be so rewarding and you can actually, you know, harvest some fish too. There's some things like a permit that are so good to eat. Mangrove snapper are amazing uh, to eat. Pompano, palometa, uh, like I said, cobia every now and then, and Spanish mackerel. These fish are all excellent table fare, and you can bring some fish home to your family and have a good time with that. So target species from the beach include snook, tarpon, big jack crevels. I mean, like, how impressive is it to get a 20, 30-pound jack crevel from the beach? Barracuda, uh, sharks. We get black tips. Uh, we don't target sharks very often, but we do catch them when we're trying to get other things like tarpon and barracudas and so on. We'll, we'll catch our black tips. You can catch a lot of big sharks from the beach. We don't typically target big sharks, but that'll be addressed in other videos. Uh, but guys, bull sharks, hammerheads, they all live right on our uh, beaches in Southeast Florida. Uh, you can catch bonita. You can catch cobia. We've caught cobia from the beach. Imagine that. Permit. You ever hook a monster permit? You wanna hook into a freight train? Catch a monster permit and you will, your forearms will be sore for a couple days, guaranteed. Spanish mackerel, bluefish. Uh, I, I know I'm missing some. Did I say mangrove snapper? <laughs> Guys, there's so many fish that we can catch from the beach and target them. And you, can, you just got to kind of know what they eat and how to present your bait and when, when to fish, where to fish, a few tactics, and you'll be, start being successful on the beach, all without a boat. I mean, I grew up without a boat most of my life, and we just had to make do with a couple fishing poles, a cast net. Uh, parents would drop me off at the beach when I was a teenager, and we would just sit there and fish for four or five hours and learned a lot about how to be successful. So guys, uh, beach fishing, such a great sport. I'm so grateful to live down here in um, sunny South Florida, this paradise uh, we get to call home and where we get all these fish right in our backyard. Such a great thing. So selecting a spot can be one of the most challenging things. Guys, you gotta think, um, with down here in South Florida, there's so many people, you gotta plan on uh, trying to find a time or a beach where there's not a ton of people. Obviously, lifeguarded beaches, they're not gonna let you fish during the public hours, so you're gonna have to wait till lifeguards leave. Or if you go to a private beach, which is preferable, uh, there's typically private beaches are better, but then you have parking issues. How do you find a parking spot? Those are all things you got to kind of develop. Uh, there are a few things that to look for when selecting a spot to fish from, uh, from the beach. But guys, it's the Atlantic Ocean. And as long as there's bait, where there's food, there's fish. And so if you know where the bait is, you know what fish are eating, and you can locate bait, 
then you're probably going to find predatory fish that are willing to chomp on them. So uh, guys, selecting a place, sometimes going snorkeling uh, before you actually go fishing and getting to know the bottom structure, where the sandbars are, where is there any structure in the area? Is there a shallow reef, a patch reef off, off the shore? Is it near a jetty or an inlet? All these things play into uh, the success that you're gonna have or knowing what fish are gonna be there because if there's structure, that changes things uh, versus a kind of a desert beach. There's still fish on a desert beach, but you just gotta know what types of fish to target and what types of bait to use. Very important to know the bottom structure, know what's going on uh, under the water at the beach that you're gonna fish at. Try to avoid people. I'd say either early, early mornings or late afternoons, you know, try to avoid the crowds. The fish try to avoid the crowds as well and you don't wind up hooking people. That's not a good thing, right? When you're beach fishing, you always gotta be ready for anything. So that's why I tend to bring more tackle than I should. People kind of make fun of me because of how much stuff I bring. But I always try to like to be prepared for whatever's gonna come because you really never know for sure what you're going to experience on the beach. But when you go, typically you have a plan. Today I'm gonna fish for permit. Today I'm gonna target tarpon. Oh, it's the silver side run. Um, I'm going to bring you some lighter gear to fish silver sites. Ha come with a plan. Be ready to improvise, but come with a plan. Very, very important. Know what time of year and what bait fish are migrating at certain times of year. Also very important. If you know, hey, this is the time of year. It's fall mullet run. It's September, October. There's probably going to be mullet at the beach. That's, that's a whole different type of gear than if you're going sand flea fishing for pompano or snapper fishing at night. So uh, guys, have a plan, know the time of year, what types of baits are coming through, uh, what the fish are feeding on, and come geared up with that plan in place and you're gonna be a lot more successful. And then you can always improvise if you need to when you see things are different when you get there. So no matter what beach you're fishing on, some things never change, guys. The tides, you gotta be uh, cognizant of the tides. It's very easy these days when I was growing up uh, they didn't have the, the internet where you could just go and check what the tides are at any given beach. But now you can go online, check what the tides are, and it's going to change again how you're going to fish. The weather, very important. The wind direction. When you have a strong east wind, makes fishing very, very difficult, especially in the springtime when all the sargasm seaweed is coming on board. I, a lot of times when we get a 10, 15, 20 mile an hour east wind, I'm staying home or I'm going to go do something inshore uh, in one of the canals or inside the intracoastal or something like that and not, not worry about even trying to fight the seaweeds and the waves uh, and the wind down at the beach. So when you go to the beach, one of the big things that you got to think of is you got to make sure you're keeping your fishing gear out of the sand. Uh, every year, I mean, we put a, put a beating on our equipment, to be honest with you. <laughs> every year I got to go in a couple times a year and open up all my reels, clean out all the sand and re-grease them and it's a real pain. Uh, but you gotta make sure when you show up to the beach that first of all, you, you gotta have some decent gear because if you come with gear that's not rated for saltwater fishing, uh, then you're gonna use it once or, time, once or twice in the salt water and it's gonna seize up on you and it's gonna be, uh, you're gonna wind up throwing it away. So invest a little bit of money. You can find some used stuff that's really good that you can bring, but you gotta show up with the right gear and then you gotta take care of your gear, making sure you're rinsing it out, making sure you're oiling your reels, making sure you're greasing your reel. Keep them out of the sand. Don't let your reels touch the sand. Very, very, very important. Worst enemies for a fishing reel are sand and salt water. Like, well, Dave, we're on a beach. What do you want us to do? Well, we gotta find out ways to do it. Bring some towels. If you have a beach cart, that's great. Uh, if you don't, just find ways to keep your equipment out of the sand. Very, very important. Um, we like to use sand spikes, so big pieces of PVC with the edges cut off where you can kind of hammer them down. Uh, you know, you can, you just, first thing you do is put, put your PVC rod holders in the sand and then you can put your rods right in them and it keeps your reels out of the sand. Uh, that's a great way to do it. So sand spikes, PVC rod holders are a great thing to use when you're beach fishing. So when you're coming to the beach, have a plan, have a plan in place, you show up, try to go light, guys. I'm, people don't believe me when I say this because 
Uh, I bring what I call the ark. I've got this big old cart and I bring everything I can think of because I always want to be prepared for the unknown. Uh, and it's really more of a novelty than anything. But, uh, but going light is very important, especially if you're just trying to have a good relaxing time and not be too complicated. So your fishing reels should probably be between 20 and 30 pound class. That's a great uh, place to start when you're beach fishing. That'll tackle most of the fish that you'll encounter on the beach. Uh, unless you're going really, really big or really, really small, then you may not need uh, something either big or smaller. But 20 to 30 pound class is good. Go light. Guys, a small tackle box is super important. All you really need are, you know, we use 2.0 to 6.0 size hooks. So I have a couple of those in between. We use three different types of leader material. We've got 20 pound, 40 pound, or 60 pound fluorocarbon. Maybe a little spool of wire leader in case we're getting into some mackerel or barracuda or something like that. Something that has teeth that will cut through the monofilament. Uh, but some weights, some swivels, and that's really about it. And, you know, unless you're going to bring some artificial stuff and, you know, I see guys come with their backpacks and all they have is some soft plastic baits and they're throwing artificials. Um, that's great. And that can be very successful as well. Um, but just try not to go too heavy. So you've got a small tackle box. You've got a few things in it, a pair of pliers. And, you know, that's pretty much all you're going to need in order to be successful on the beach. I would bring a bucket with a lid and then you can keep your cast net in your bucket and you can have an aerator, like a little bubbler. You can buy one for like $15 at a, any local tackle store, put some batteries in it and the bubbler will keep your bait alive while you're fishing. So five gallon bucket, your cast net, your bubbler, your little tackle box. Uh, you can bring a cooler if you want, but you guys, you start starts to get more and more compounded with how much stuff you're bringing. But that's the bare necessities. You got a couple sand spikes for your rods, your your rod holders, your PVC rod holders, and you are good to go. And so, guys, people ask me about a license. What do I need for a fishing license when I'm down on the beach? Uh, there's a you can go to myfwc.org and get a free shoreline fishing permit. You don't necessarily need a saltwater fishing license when on the beach. A saltwater fishing license covers you on the beach, but those cost fifteen dollars. Uh, but if you're on the freshwater, you need a freshwater fishing license. If you're out in a boat in salt water, you need a saltwater fishing license. But while you're on the beach, free uh, shoreline fishing permit. You can order your license there online and take care of that. So guys, try to select a spot with uh, not so many people uh, out of the way, decent parking in the evening or early morning. Um, and you know, get to know your spot and, and you'll be successful. You just put your time in, you learn a few of the things that we have to share on these videos, you will be successful. So guys, that's about all the time we have for today. But guys, one of the most important things you can do is let's try to help change the reputation that fishermen have and leave the fishing spot clean. Very, very important. So many times You'll go down to a, a place by a beach or by the water on a jetty and there's fishing hooks, there's, there's bloody cut bait on the, on the rocks or on the sand, there's line and it's a mess and people hate it. So, um, you know, if you want to be friendly to our environment, to the, to the creation and to all of our neighbors here in Southeast Florida, uh, please make sure you clean your fishing holes very, very well before you leave. In fact, what if you leave it better than when you when you showed up? And so actually pick up some trash while you're there that maybe you didn't even leave. Uh, let's leave our, a good taste in people's mouths when it comes to fishing. That is super important, guys. But that's about all the time we have for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. This is a very general video. We're going to get a lot deeper and more specific in some of our videos that are coming up. They're going to be a little more short than this. But if you have anything that you want to learn about fishing, let us know, comment down below, what do you want to know? And we will make videos to help cater to what you want, to what you need, and we're going to help you be successful. So comment down below, reach out to us. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. We're trying to build our subscription base, guys. So share us with your friends as well. And uh, till the next time, God bless, stay safe, and let's get out there and catch some fish. Watch and live.